So first of all, Stephen, can California do this? Well, the answer is that they've got a couple of things in their favor. It's 27 years between now and 2045, and the cost of storage, energy storage or battery storage, which would be a major uh, means of, of carrying this out, is continuing to fall. We, we see it down 40% between now and uh, 2025, and uh, have every reason to think it's going to keep falling after that. So what is it that's going to help California do this? We are seeing uh, the economics of clean energy, of solar and wind get better. The economics are getting much better, and uh, California draws from a very, very long extension cord, if you will. Um, in addition to the power that it generates in state, California uh, acquires electricity from Canada, Mexico, and, and most of the states in between. So the, uh, the pool is very broad. The renewable resources, especially for wind and solar, are, are, are very attractive. And uh, as we know, California is an innovative place. So do we need new technology or has that technology been developed already? Um, we always need new technology for meeting goals like this. Uh, and of course, it's impossible to predict what, what the exact outlines of the technology might look like. But between now and 2030, when um, some of the uh, interim mandates start to kick in uh, of this new law, it's very likely that we'll see step changes in the technology development in solar power, uh, as well as in battery storage, which are, are two very important tools to get there. And yet we're continuing to see the administration roll back clean power related protections. You know, how difficult is this going to be to do state by state without the support of the administration? Well, the fact is that in the present environment, the present political environment, if it's going to be done in the U.S., it's going to have to be done state by state. Now, the uh, opportunity exists, and several states are looking into forming consortia um, whereby they could more or less join forces, not just on the goals and, and mandates, but also on the means of getting there. But um, barring uh, some change in policy orientation by the president, uh, by the present president. Uh, it seems like the state by state approach is what we're uh, what we're looking at for uh, the foreseeable future. And can they afford it? How much will it cost to get to 100 percent clean power for California, for example? Well, um, we don't have a number uh, for that. We are endeavoring to uh, arrive at one, but there are many, many variables uh, that are going to have some direct impact, uh, including such things as the mix of, uh, of generation that's going to actually eventually be, be the one used. And of course, there are the ongoing uh, cost declines in the technologies, and there are wild cards like tariffs and, and uh, international uh, exchange and foreign exchange as well. 2020, 2045 seems so close yet so far. Is it close enough to stave off the, the worst effects of climate change? Well, um, we, there, there's an emerging consensus uh, in, the, in the climate sector that uh, globally we haven't uh, done enough to prevent the 2% Celsius temperature gain uh, that was the goal of the original uh, uh, climate accords. So what that means is we've dug ourselves a little bit of a deeper hole, uh, globally speaking. Uh, in order to have significant effect uh, on the uh, emissions caused aspects of climate change, um, it's safe to say that a tremendous amount of investment is required as well as uh, new commitments uh, and, and, and large commitments by those who have already made them. And look, let's just take this one example of, of rolling back these methane protections, how much can that set us back? Well, methane is by itself is a very, very potent greenhouse gas. Um, and we have to see what the administration's proposal is in that regard. If it involves releasing uh, methane, raw methane into the atmosphere, then we're, we're looking at a, like I said, a very potent uh, uh, climate change enhancer. On the other hand, if the methane can be burned off on site, as is practiced in many parts of the country, then it becomes another form of carbon dioxide pollution, which uh, is also something that requires control, uh, but not nearly to the extent that methane does. Now, meantime, we've got the Global Climate Action Summit happening this week in California. This is a gathering of leaders from government, uh, CEOs, and, and members of the private sector and, and um, nonprofits uh, getting together to talk about what they are doing despite 
the, the messaging from the administration. What are you expecting to happen at this summit this week? Well, uh, there's a couple of things that uh, I think are, are, are highly possible. One would be some sort of enhanced commitments and announcements by uh, policy-oriented participants um, um, at the event. In other words, uh, uh, players that have existing commitments with regard to emissions reductions or technology investment stepping up, uh, stepping those up a bit. The second one would have to do with uh, policymakers themselves uh, embracing some new forms of, uh, of, of policy incentives, whether they be tax credits or carbon, ta uh, carbon taxation. Um, either of these things seem uh, like distinct possibilities at an event like this.